Guys, this is finally happening. The amazing digital circus, Good to Evil. I watch sometimes Good to Evil uh, videos in Wicked Bench. This is my favorite YouTuber in the past. So let's go. Three, two, one, go. So, okay. Do you have a new adventure today for the newbie or what? A brand new YouTube series by Gooseworks and Glitch Productions. The amazing Digital Circus's pilot episode has been taking the internet by storm, us included. And today we'll be diving into this dark yet playful new series and looking at its characters' morality. This is the amazing Digital Circus pilot characters, good to evil. As usual, we'll be starting with the most noble character and working our way down to the evil. These characters are the good. And taking a borderline effortless gold medal of good well, get is Ragatha. While of course. Of these fellow captives, I mean performers in the circus are either totally cynical, apathetic, or just fully insane. Ragatha has managed to impressively avoid any of these paths, at least so far. Ragatha is by far the most caring of the digital circus crew. Guys, don't be mean. We see this in particular through the effort she makes to keep Pomni calm when she's understandably panicking and shows great concern for everyone around her. She's also very understanding in general. Instead of screaming for help while she's being attacked by an abstracted Kafma, like basically any rational person would, she just asks Pomni to help her out as a favor, even throwing in that she totally understands if she doesn't want to. When it turns out she can't help without getting hurt, Ragatha doesn't hold it against her for fleeing, forgiving her immediately and not even thinking twice about it. It's okay! Now, of course, Ragatha is still shown to be just as troubled by her situation as everyone else. But despite being on the brink of insanity, she still comes out of the pilot as the most compassionate and caring member of this pseudo-circus troop. Hopefully this will keep her from going totally abstracted herself. But for now, she's one of the few level-headed characters in a world of complete and utter chaos. Taking the silver medal of good is the protagonist of the show, Pomni. Pomni is a young woman who's basically been isekai'd into this odd PS2 game of a universe via some unspecified weird headset she put on. She is, of course, stressed out by her bizarre situation and clings desperately to the hope of finding an exit. Slowly but surely, the realization creeps in that there really might not be a way out. Not even through the void. This is the void! But as for her placement in terms of morality, she does try to look out for others. Despite initially fleeing, she returns Ragatha's goodwill by going back to help her after escaping from Kothma, and ends up getting Kane's attention so she can get healed of her corruption. I am in so much pain! Only time will tell how Pomni's time at the circus will change her mindset, but for now, she seems like a pretty solid person. Although that ending really seemed to be suggesting that she's pretty darn close to snapping already. Still, we believe in you, Pomni. Next is perhaps the most yep. tragic character in the series so far, Gangle. Poor Gangle, always getting her comedy mask broken and consequently forced into bouts of depression. Look on the bright side, though. Despite all of her sadness, she does show concern for people around her. She's among the members who expresses the most concern about Kafmo when Jax and the others go to check up on her. And there isn't anything even reminiscent of bad will in her. There's yeah. not too much to say about her so far, but hopefully she'll get that comedy mask fixed so we can see what that side of her personality is like. We're going to give our final spot in the good section to the most refined royal character in the show, Kinger. Kinger is, from a surface level point of view, the closest member of the cast to going off the deep end in terms of insanity. He's paranoid and startles quite easily, with a slow reaction time and a unique brand of absent-mindedness that makes him not quite fully aware of what's going on around him. If you try to talk to him, he usually either ends up mistaking the discussion topic for an insect collection, or having an input delayed scream because you startled it, like several seconds ago. Ah, oh, Gangle, you startled me. Kinger is definitely one of the more lighthearted members of the cast, and with that said, like Gangle, doesn't have any ill will towards anyone. On the contrary, he's actually capable of being heroic. He was quick to help save Zubal from the Gloinks even after winning rock, paper, scissors with Gangle. This means that he either played because he wanted to save Zubal, or he was willing to even though he was scared. Either way, he seems pretty deserving of that crown so far. But here's where things 
get a little more complex. These characters fall in the gray area. Floating to the top of this section is Kane's lovable sidekick, Bubble. Bubble is comparable to a hyperactive dog with extremely excitable and spontaneous behavior. Sometimes obnoxious, always strange, and always intended to help his master. In other words, he's basically Gurr from Invader Zim, except with a little more sanity. And he's also a Bubble with chain chop teeth. Always excited to see what Kane has in store for the circus, Bubble is often finding himself temporarily popped out of existence for his eccentric behavior. But don't worry though, it actually doesn't hurt him. And he comes right back oh, every okay. time. Yeah, I was worried too the first time. Honestly, a dark comedy series needs some characters like Bubbles, who are just plain silly. And for that, we kind of have to salute him as one of the best characters. Hopefully no plot twist makes us regret saying that later on. The only reason we can't place him in the good section is that, while he is friendly, he is also the right-hand man to Kane, who is certainly more questionable in terms of morality. But we'll get to him later. Zubal is shaping up to be our next entry. Perhaps the most neutral character in the cast so far. She's just kind of done with everything. She drops out of any activity she isn't forced to participate in. And while she's not the nicest member of the bunch, she's also not particularly mean. Just very cynical. She also strangles Jax in one scene, so that earns her some good points. Next day is Dearly Departed and Abstract. I'm excited. I'm excited for the next episode. I want to see more about the amazing digital circus. Huh? What? What? Corrupt whatever they touch once their mental state finally reaches a total breaking point. The poor guy turns what? into a straight up monster at this point, and combining that with our lack of knowledge regarding his actual character, we have to leave him in the gray area. And rounding out that gray area is the show's host himself, Kane. Right. Every circus so, needs yeah. a remaster, and Kane is more than happy to fill that role for the digital circus. Like Bubble, he's an AI rather than a human trapped in his world. And he's by far the character with the most mysteries surrounding him. Who made Kane? Is he good? Evil? Neutral? Is he just vibing? Well, it's way too early to say, like with most of these guys. But we're going to play Kane's advocate here and say that there's a lot more than meets the eye. First, his good traits. Kane gives the members of the Digital Circus adventures to go on so they won't get bored and or go insane. Same difference, really. And he has the power to heal them of corruption before they go totally abstracted. At which point, he has to cast them away so they don't hurt anyone else. So technically, he is single-handedly keeping several people from going nuts. Or at least delaying it. But now on to the villain argument. At worst, he could be a monster who's trapping these people here against their wills. But if that were the case, would he be willing to let Zubal sit out of the adventure? He's also willing to reward the members with food, gives them room, and warns them not to venture out into the void. He loses some points for his erratic behavior, and the fact that there is way too much blank space there to justify it yet. But we have a feeling he's at least not all bad. But these next guys are a little more black and white with their bad sides. These characters are the bad and the evil. With only two characters left, we have to give the silver medal of evil to Jax. Jax, of course. One episode with these characters so far, and so it goes without saying that there's going to be more to all of them than meets the eye. We don't know anything about any of these guys' human lives, but we do know one thing about Jax that differentiates him from the others. He is such a jerk. We get it, being stuck in the same place for so long, you grow apathetic and start to wonder what the point of anything is. At that point, you have multiple paths. You can be like Ragatha, trying to keep everyone as safe and comfy as possible. Or you can be like Kinger, and go slowly insane while maintaining some morals. You can even be like Zubal, who just doesn't really care at this point. But Jax takes possibly the worst path of all, by just being mean due to the lack of consequences. He shoves people around, physically assaulting them on multiple occasions, has keys to everyone else's rooms, and ultimately causes mischief just to watch funny things happen to others. It's all just a game to Jax, and while we wouldn't quite call him an evil person, 
He is definitely a big jerk, but compared to the gold medalist of evil, the Gloin Queen, he's practically a saint. Unlike the other monarch of the cast, Gloin Queen is a tyrant who wants to make everyone into Gloinks. She is an AI like Kane and Bubble, and is only intended to serve as the endgame of one of the circus's adventures. That doesn't change her being a monster who basically wants to make a new world order, where there's only one race. For a character who's probably never even going to be mentioned again, that is kind of intense. Yeah. A lot. A lot. Anyway, bye guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Huh? Bye.